I'm, I'm Dr. Paul Singh from Southeastern Wisconsin at the Eye Centers of Racine and Kenosha. So the question of, you know, how do we define success of these MIGS devices? It's pretty much, a, a, I think, one of the most important questions we have to answer because there's a lot of data out there. And with cataract surgery alone versus a lot of these MIGS devices, you know, cataract surgery alone does a great job. So the question always comes, how do we define success? And I've heard some doctors that say, I put a stent in the eye and the pressures were not much lower than when I had the surgery before. And so what I found is that the definition also has to include number of medication, so, so the medication burden. So for instance, you have a patient of a pressure of 18 or 16 on a prostaglandin analog. They go to have cataract surgery with a stent or other procedure. They come back, their pressure is still 18, but they're off the medication. Some would say, well, it didn't really work. It didn't bring my pressure down lower. It may not be, but you've gotten that patient off of medication. So I think we can't underestimate the impact or the importance of getting someone off of even one medication. I mean, I can't tell you how many patients have come in. I had a patient the other day whose mother had glaucoma. Her mother couldn't take the medications every night. And so she would have to drive 20 minutes every night to put drops in her mother's eye. And so after having the surgery with the stent, with the eye stent in this case, after surgery, the patient was off meds and the daughter was crying saying you opened up my life I can travel now so even something as simple as one medication can make a big impact on patients quality of life and their family's quality of life as well so medication burden is a big part of it number two it's also if you're still on medications sometimes you have to put people back on meds but their pressure is lower so in other words the patient's target pressure is 13 or 14 they're on three meds now they're on only two meds they were 18, but now they're 13 on one medication. So again, I think we have to balance out number of medications and also where's our target pressure as well. So I think that's part of the definition in understanding where, where our target pressure is and what the anatomy and the mechanism of resistance is. And that will also tailor the type of product and device we use. SLT, I think, is, is really underutilized in, in the U.S. especially. Uh, SLT is a very common procedure. Now we do, but yet it's not utilized as first line or even second line. We, we tend to focus on drops first. And I think we see a big push now to reduce the compliance issues that our patients face. And SLT to me is a great way to introduce the idea of getting people off of drops. And why? Because it's a very safe procedure. So the high safety, low risk. And because of that reason, I think we have the opportunity now to avoid the need for drops. We can help the disease process because what was exciting about MIGS and the natural conventional outflow with these procedures is we can reestablish or rejuvenate the natural outflow system. And that's what these MIGS devices can do a lot of times. Well, SLT accomplishes part of that same issue. And by earlier intervention with the laser, opening up the trabecular mesh work, helping natural outflow, there's a chance that it also may prevent further collapse later on and theoretically maybe give us a better chance of our MIGS devices to work better in the future.